Hey everybody, Medi Fizzman here. I am a medical physicist who has spent my entire career researching how radiation interacts with the body for the purpose of improving how we image, diagnose, and treat disease. And we are here today to talk about radiation therapy. In particular, how helpful is it? Can we use radiation to treat cancer, get us cured up, and let us go on about our lives? Or is it harmful? Can the radiation that we absorb during radiation therapy, can it actually hurt us? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So with that, let's get started. We are gonna start this video with a disclaimer. This video is for informational purposes only. I'm only here to provide you information about radiation therapy. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to get a medical image or get radiation therapy, please consult with your doctor or qualified medical professional when it comes to making decisions about your medical care. And as always, I've left references and links to all the information I provide in this video down below in the description. So if you wanna learn more after you watch this, check those out. So now let's talk about radiation therapy. What is it? In particular, we're talking about the use of ionizing radiation to treat cancer. And so what might happen is they have you lay down on a table and use a beam of radiation from a machine to treat your cancer. And this is what's known as external beam radiation therapy. And they might use beams of all different types of radiation like x-rays or gamma rays or protons, a whole wide range of them. Now, another form of radiation therapy is what's known as brachytherapy. And in this case, they use this tiny little radiation seed. And that seed emits radiation. And there's lots of different types of seeds that emit X-rays or beta particles or alpha particles. So they use lots of different types of seeds for brachytherapy. And what they'll do is use a whole array of seeds and they will implant those surgically into your tumor. And while they're in the tumor, they are releasing their radiation and basically irradiating your tumor from the inside out. I often refer to this as internal beam radiation therapy, but I think I'm the only person that's ever used that term. Now, another type of brachytherapy, they have a radiation seed on a cable and they will run that into your body through a tube and into your tumor where it can irradiate your tumor again from the inside out. And when they're done, they pull that seed back out. And finally, one more type of radiation therapy. This is what's known as radionuclide therapy. So they have a liquid filled with what are called radiopharmaceuticals. So it's basically a radioactive liquid that they hook up to an IV and they infuse into your body. And that liquid gets absorbed by the tumor and then it releases its radiation and again, irradiates your tumor from the inside out. Now they use many different types of radiopharmaceuticals, but they are basically types that emit alpha particles or beta or electrons. So how does radiation therapy work? Well, remember when we're treating your cancer with radiation therapy, we are radiating your tumor. And what is inside of your tumor? Cells, right? Cancer cells. So we're irradiating these cancer cells. And what's inside of these cells? DNA. So we're using ionizing radiation, and we know if that radiation interacts with the DNA, it has enough energy to damage the DNA. And so what happens when you damage the DNA? Well, where it can interrupt the cell's ability to function, the cell can't properly read this damaged DNA and know what to do. Or when it's time for the cell to divide, it can't replicate this damaged DNA, and so the cell kind of just withers away and dies. So if we irradiate a tumor with a lot of radiation, we damage lots of DNA and lots of cancer cells die. This is the treatment effect. This is how radiation therapy works. It damages the cancer DNA, cancer cells die. The problem here also could be that we're also irradiating healthy cells in the tissues around the tumor when we irradiate it. And if we damage the DNA in these cells, then we can disrupt the function of those cells and organs, and that can make us sick. This can cause the side effects of radiation therapy. Ah, ah, time for our mug shot of the day. Here we go, one of my favorite mugs today, that featuring our, the great artist, Mr. Bob Ross. 
This mug is great because when you put your hot coffee in it, the picture that Bob Ross is painting appears. So you see the valley with all the happy little trees in the background. Anyway, one of my favorite mugs. Anyway, back to the serious stuff. So what are the side effects of radiation therapy that you might see if you were to be treated? Now, what you might see is over the course of treatment, some side effect might start to occur. And if you go further in treatment and you receive more dose, this side effect might get more severe. And so some of these side effects might be things like radiation burns or lung pneumonitis or dry mouth. These are what's known as deterministic effects. Basically, you need a minimum dose for these side effects to occur, like you need greater than two gray of dose to your skin before it starts to get red and look like a sunburn. Uh, the severity of these doses increases as the dose received to the organ or tissue increases. And in general, these side effects will heal after exposure. So over time, they will sort of decrease in severity. They may completely go away. They may not. It depends on the case, the tumor. It depends on a lot of things. But in general, they tend to decrease in severity over time. Now, there are other types of side effects like cancer. That's a big one. We want to know, is the radiation dose we give to treat your cancer, can that cause you to develop another cancer, right? So let's say you're treated and you finish treatment and all is well and you go on about your life and say, I don't know, 300 takeout coffees later, you notice a secondary cancer starts to appear. And this might happen typically maybe five years or more after treatment. And it depends on the type of cancer you have. It depends on lots of factors like your overall health and your age. And this, But this is what's known as a stochastic side effect. Any dose of radiation you receive will increase your probability of this side effect, of a secondary cancer occurring later in life. Now that probability increases linearly as the dose you receive goes up. The severity of the cancer doesn't get worse. You either have it or you don't. So more dose to your body only increases the probability that a cancer might occur. So the goal of radiation therapy in this case is to give a big dose to the tumor and destroy your cancer. However, we want to avoid giving a large dose of radiation to the tissues around the tumor so that we don't cause these secondary deterministic and stochastic side effects. So how do we accomplish this goal? Well, we're going to develop something called a treatment plan if you are to get treated with radiotherapy. So you'll come to the hospital or wherever you get treated and you will get a CT scan. And on that CT scan, they will identify where the tumor is, right? They'll say right here, here it is. This is what we call our target volume. And then we, the physician or your oncologist will also identify all the healthy organs that are around that tumor that we want to try avoid irradiating with the treatment. So then they will write a prescription for radiation therapy, much like they might write a prescription for an itchy rash or something. You know, take one pill a day for seven days and that itchy rash goes away. In this case, they write a prescription for radiation therapy. And it might say, give 50 gray of dose to the tumor or the target volume in 28 daily treatments. And then they will also write constraints in that to say, hey, make sure the spinal cord dose is below a certain level. Make sure the lungs get less, the, less than a certain dose so we can avoid those deterministic and stochastic side effects. So then it's the job of very talented people called treatment planners or physicists like myself to come in and figure out how to meet that prescription. So they will develop this treatment plan that might look, in this case, something like this, where they use three treatment beams, one from the front, one from the side, and another from the back. And they angle those beams so that they all overlap right inside of your tumor, right inside of that target volume. So you get a high dose of radiation right there in the tumor. But what they've done is made sure that the dose delivered to the organs around it is kept very low, below those constraint levels, so we can avoid side effects. Next, let's just do sort of a risk-benefit analysis here for cancer. I mean, the risk is obvious that you can get side effects. There's a slight chance of cancer later in life, but is the benefit worth it? That's what kind of what we want to talk about. So let's look at lung cancer, just a case study. People diagnosed with lung cancer who do not receive treatment say, no, I don't want treatment. Their median or average survival time is less than one year. You know, and that's 
to me, that's scary. That's not, you know, that's something, if I heard that, I would say that's very scary. However, people who receive treatment, including radiation therapy, their medium or average survival time is measured in multiple years, 2.5 to 4 years after treatment. And this depends on a lot of things like what was this an advanced stage tumor when they found it? What was your overall survival? What's your age? Lots of things that go into that. But the point is here, a lot of people live for a long time after cancer treatment for lung cancer. Up to 65% of people can live five years or longer. And we also see that with these modern treatment plans and techniques, like I showed you that treatment plan, they can keep the risk of developing a side effect to well less than 5% in most cases. Now, that was lung cancer. I mean, what about other types of cancer? And again, it depends. You want to get your diagnosis early and you want to receive treatment. And in these cases, breast cancer survival rates can be greater than 91% or prostate up to 95%. Even pediatric cancers, let's look at that. You know, pediatric brain, leukemia, the most common types of pediatric cancers, you can see long-term survival rates of 60, 70, 95%. And what we've seen is that since we've been tracking this since the 1970s, survival of, of cancer after radiation therapy and treatment, the survival rates have been going up. And as treatment modalities have improved, the side effects have been going down. Okay, so let's try to wrap up everything we've been talking about here. We want to know, is radiation therapy helpful, right? So if you ever need to be treated for cancer, and I hope no one watching this ever does, but if you do and your physician says, hey, we'd like to do radiation therapy, you know that you're going to receive a very precise, highly focal, focused radiation treatment to your tumor, and that likely this is going to improve your overall survival. Now. Is it harmful? I mean, are there side effects we should be worried about with radiation therapy? Now, we discussed deterministic, stochastic side effects, but overall, these are very mild and they're kept to a very low level with modern techniques. You will not be turned into the Hulk, so you really don't have to worry about it. It's not that dramatic. Overall, if we look at everything we've talked about, right, radiation therapy helps improve survival. With improved treatment techniques and these targeted techniques, we can really focus on the tumor and help cure that tumor. Now, side effects do happen. You know, they require a high dose to your normal tissues, and the risks increase linearly with dose, especially if there's a secondary cancer later on in life. But overall, the risk of side effects are very low and maybe less than 5%. So we know with our improved techniques we see today, we get longer survival times and far fewer side effects. So overall, yeah, I got to vote helpful for radiation therapy. There is that risk of side effects, so maybe the harmfulness, uh, there's a risk of that, but it's very low, much smaller than the benefits we get from it. So overall, I got to go with helpful for radiation therapy. Now, if you have questions or concerns, again, talk with your doctor. Say, hey doc, what is the best type of radiation therapy for me? What are the risks? Are there other treatments we should be looking into too? These are all important things for you to talk with your doctor about. So with that, guys, I think that's about everything I've got. So I'm going to switch to full screen mode here and help it conclude. If you have questions or comments about anything I've said, please leave me a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer it. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, let me know. Maybe I can make a video for you. Overall, I hope this has all been helpful, and uh, we will definitely talk with you guys next time, all right? Overall, I think this was my favorite skateboard animation. I like that one the best.